Okay, so in this unit, we're going to talk about how neurons talk to each other. Before we examine how they talk to each other, we have to figure out how they talk, period. And um, you, you could say, and I think that most people understand, that neurons talk by using electrical signals. Um, so you could say they, they, tr they talk electrical ease. But there's a really key difference between the electrical language of a neuron or of any living cell and the electrical language of one of your devices, one of your electrical devices at home uh, or here. Um, so in an, in an appliance, uh, in something that you plug into the wall, what we're using is just electrons. Um, in the living organism, we don't use electrons. Instead, we use molecules that have a charge. And those molecules are called ions. So ions are simply molecules where the number of protons is not equal to the number of electrons. Another way to think about this is these molecules have either uh, lost a, an electron or two, oops, lost that electron, um, and now they're positively charged, or they've gained one. One has come on to this, this uh, molecule, and then they're negatively charged. So ions are either positively charged or negatively charged, just because they've either gained or lost uh, electrons. So these, these ions um, uh, are present within the context of cells, and cells all have what are called cellular membranes. So a membrane is a, is a very amazing structure that's made up mostly of fat. It's important to understand that most of a membrane is fat. Uh, and this is like uh, a layer of oil surrounded by a couple layers of, of water. And so here's inside the cell, here's outside the cell. I've only detailed a small part of this but this would continue all the way around the cell. So if I have a charged particle, uh, let's consider a, a, an ion that's positively charged, and let's consider, consider one that's um, potassium. So K plus equals a potassium ion. Well, this potassium ion is very happy in water, but it can't get through oil. It's not going to pass through there. So it's going to bounce off this membrane. And the only way for it to get through is via a special place, which is which we're going to call an ion channel. Okay? So this is nothing more fancy than essentially a cat door for the potassium ion. This is a door. This is the building. And this is the only way in or out. You cannot go through the walls. you got to go through a door, and the door is called an ion channel. <clears throat> now, how is the potassium going to distribute across this membrane? Well, the potassium has two <clears throat> features. One, it's a chemical. It's a, it's a molecule. So as a, as a chemical, it's akin to a uh, food dye. So if I put a lot of blue dye here, and there's no blue dye here, well, the blue dye is going to go that way. Because the gradient is, there's more here than there, or in the end, if there's an open door, the amount of blue dye everywhere is going to be even. So the chemical force for this potassium ion is to leave, leave the cell. But on the other hand, this, the cell is actually negatively charged. And outside, this is zero. It's, it's, it's like being ground. It's grounded. It's got a lightning rod there. So this is negatively charged and this is zero. Well, the potassium ion is positive, and so there's an electrical force that goes inside the cell. 
So what happens? Well, you, you cannot reason your way through this, um, but very smart physical chemists and physicists worked out uh, how this went, at what potential the chemical force and the electrical force will be even. And that is where the membrane is going to sit, where the chemical force and the electrical force are even for every ion that we have to worry about. And we have to worry about three ions, the potassium ion, the sodium ion, which is also positively charged, and chloride ion. And once we take into consideration each of these ions, what we see is that this um, cell is going to sit at rest at about negative 70 to negative 60 millivolts. Millivolts being one one thousandth of a volt. Now we all the time, we have batteries that give us nine volts or a few volts. Anyway, this is one one thousandth of a volt. That doesn't sound like a lot of um, uh, potential voltage, but you're talking about keeping it across a, a very small um, uh, distance. And so this is essentially like keeping a lightning bolt um, an inch away from yourself. This is a very, um, an amazing structure. It's a very powerful structure. So the bottom line is that at rest, what we have is a distribution of these different ions based on both their electrical and their chemical, uh, based on electrical and chemical forces. And the result is that this, ne this neuron is going to sit always at a negative potential until something happens. And that's what we're going to talk about in the next segment. <music>